I'm going to cover the development of the constraint equations for fixed standard wheels on a mobile robot. We start off with this figure and I will introduce some of the terms as we go along and also this is going to be posted as a PDF so if some of the notation is too small to see in this video then you can look at the PDF. Now we have a robot frame XR and YR and we want to apply the constraints of the fixed standard wheel to the velocity of that frame. So we know that the fixed standard wheel can only move in this direction so the center point of the wheel can only move in this direction there's no sliding allowed and we know that the velocity of the wheel in this direction is equal to the is equal to the product of the wheel radius and the angular velocity of the wheel. So we're calling this the direction of the wheel plane and this is the direction normal to the wheel plane. Now that wheel is located in the robot frame using the parameters alpha and L that gives you the location of the wheel center point and then the angle beta gives you the orientation of the wheel axis or the direction normal to the wheel plane. And one other convention we call when beta is when beta is zero that means that a positive direction of the wheel would point in the direction from the origin to the wheel. That's a lot of words but here it is visually. So if this blue pin is a, a vector and this is the positive direction of that vector then this it's pointing right now in the direction of positive rotation of the wheel. So you can see here this VP that would be the velocity of the wheel in the direction of the wheel plane or parallel to the wheel plane. So it, this is shown for positive angular velocity of the wheel. So for this positive angular velocity phi dot greater than zero the wheel will be rotating about that axis so you can see it's spinning like that which would make it roll this way. So that's our convention for phi dot, the direction of phi dot relative to beta or to this axis. Okay. So one more point on that. If alpha was zero and beta was zero, then what direction would the wheel roll in for positive phi dot, for positive angular velocity? Think about that for a second. Maybe pause the video. And the answer is that the wheel would roll in the negative yr direction. So it would be on this axis and the wheel axis would be pointing this way so a positive rotation like that would bring the wheel in the negative yr direction. All right so we want to relate the wheel constraints to the velocity of the robot frame. So first of all we're going to find the velocity of the wheel center point or rather sure the velocity of the wheel center point or the velocity velocity of the robot at a point coincident so with, coincident with the center of the wheel. Same thing. So we are typically given the velocity of the robot rel or the velocity of a the robot's origin and if we're given that expressed in this frame then that's x dot r y dot r so r is the robot frame so that's v o and we also know the angular velocity of the robot so to find the velocity of this point on the robot we just use this expression. So the velocity of this point is the velocity of this point plus angular velocity, the cross product of angular velocity and the vector to the wheel from the origin. So that's all expressed here. And this comma indicates or comma r indicates that this is expressed in this coordinate system. So the velocity of the wheel expressed in this coordinate system is the velocity of the origin expressed in this coordinate system plus the cross product of omega and the vector to the wheel from the origin expressed in the robot frame. So that's what all this says. And if we expand that, uh, here's v o comma r. We have x dot r and y dot r. And here's the result of the cross product. So the cross product is going to give you some vector that looks like this. So omega cross r would be pointing this way roughly. And the x component of that is negative omega l sine of alpha and the y component of that is omega l cosine of alpha. So here is the velocity of the wheel center point 
expressed in the robot frame. Now, in order to apply our constraints, we want to decompose this into a vector parallel to the wheel plane and normal to the wheel plane. So that would give us the velocity of the wheel expressed in this coordinate system. And we're going to call that VP and VN, so velocity in the direction parallel to the wheel plane, velocity in the direction normal to the wheel plane. So here they are. And this is just a rotation matrix times the velocity of the wheel in the robot frame. And I've just defined this angle gamma as negative pi by 2 plus alpha plus beta. When we go ahead and perform this and simplify the result, then we end up with this expression for the velocity of the wheel center expressed in the wheel coordinate frame. So VP is x dot, xr dot times sine of alpha plus beta minus yr dot times cosine of alpha plus beta minus omega L cosine beta. And we know that's equal to r times phi dot. That's the rolling constraint for the wheel. Vn is x dot r cosine of alpha plus beta plus y dot yr dot times sine of alpha plus beta plus omega L sine beta. And we know that's equal to zero because the wheel's constrained not to slide in that direction. So here is our constraint equation for one wheel. This is the constraint, the result of the rolling constraint, and this is the result of the no sliding constraint. And in matrix form, it looks like this. So this would be the C matrix, and I just wrote a little subscript 1 indicating that this is for one wheel. So one wheel um, times x dot r, y dot r, omega. And sometimes I'll say omega, sometimes I'll say theta dot, but they're synonymous. And that's equal to the vector r phi dot and 0. We can use the same equation for two wheels. It's just that we will add some more rows to our matrix form. So there will be two equations for the rolling constraints. So we'd have two lines that look like this. We would just have alpha 1 and beta 1 on the first line, and alpha 2 and beta 2 on the second line, and L1 and L2. And then on the right-hand side of those two equations, we'd have R1 phi 1 dot, R2 phi 2 dot. And then we'd have two no sliding constraint equations. So the first one would have alpha 1, beta 1, and L1, and the second one, alpha 2, beta 2, L2. And those right-hand sides of those equations are both 0. And then we can generalize this to n wheels, where we have C is a um, has two by n rows and three columns for, oh, did I say this is C? This is not C. So C would be the coefficients. So C1, I'll just see if I can, I'm not going to be able to write the whole thing, but so sine alpha plus beta negative cosine alpha plus beta and negative L cosine beta would be the third term. So that would be C1. Mm. So back to what I was saying. For n wheels, f for a fixed standard wheel like this, C would have 2 times n rows and 3 columns. And then W is a diagonal matrix comprising the wheel radii. So we'd have n elements on the diagonal <clears throat> for the n wheels and phi dot is a vector of wheel speeds so that would be an n by one vector of the speeds of the n wheels and then here we have a, an n by one zero vector so that's the constraint equation here it is for one wheel and here it is broken up into a vector that we call psi dot r, so that's this vector, um, multiplied by a coefficient matrix. So psi dot r is x dot r, y dot r, and omega. And then the coefficient matrix would be sine alpha plus beta, negative cosine alpha plus beta, negative L cosine beta. And for the rolling constraint equation rows. And then the no sliding constraint equation rows of C would be cosine alpha plus beta, sine alpha plus beta, L sine beta.